Hi, welcome back. I'm Martha Kelpie, ASEC Certified Sex Therapist and Supervisor, and I am doing a little book launch series here about my brand new book, Polyamory, A Clinical Toolkit for Therapists and Their Clients. It has a beautiful forward by Kathy Labriola, and it has endorsements by, uh, from Ellen Bader, Tammy Nelson, Elizabeth Sheff, Justin Lee Miller, and Joe Court, all of them friends of mine. Um, so I want to talk today about what we can all learn about making strong, workable, healthy, secure relationships by looking at uh, polyamorous relationships that work. So who knew that doing a deep dive into working with clinical challenges with polyamory was actually going to take me into writing what is uh, essentially a book about how to make all relationships work sort of next level though, right? So, um, well, it's interesting because when I asked therapists, what are your toughest challenges about polyamory so that I can teach, you know, so that I can know what material is going to land and it's going to be helpful. Most of what I heard were questions like, what do I do when, um, my client wants one client wants to open their relationship and their partner doesn't want to open their relationship. What do I do when I'm working with a couple who had a polyamorous relationship in the past or they opened their relationship for a while, things went badly wrong, and now they want to try it again, but um, it was really a mess before. And so that's, that's messy. Um, the interesting thing about these kind of questions, oh, or how do I, um, what do I do when people are in polyamorous relationships and they're breaking their agreements or they don't know um, how to make rules that'll help them succeed. Uh, all of these questions are relationship questions. They're not really polyamory questions. Isn't that interesting? So as I was thinking about it, I was thinking, you know, this isn't all about polyamory. You know, if we can have a difference of opinion with our partner, a big difference of opinion with our partner about anything. So whether or not to open the relationship is just one of about a million examples. Do we want to have our elderly parents move in with us? There's a big one. One partner wants to, one partner doesn't want to. And let me tell you, with a question that big, it, it's a big deal. That's a big uh, difference. If somebody's values are telling them we need to have our elders in our home and somebody else's uh, mental health concerns, personal privacy concerns, boundaries, personal needs are saying, oh my God, no, you know, our house is only 800 square feet. How are we going to make this work? Um, we have three kids. They're not all out of the nest yet. Like what, how in the heck are we going to make all of this actually work? That's a big deal. So this kind of, I would call this tough dilemmas in relationship therapy, right? Um, and whether to open the relationship or not is just another example of a tough dilemma in relationship therapy. And then when we're talking about, you know, we opened our relationship in the past, things went badly wrong. It was just an absolute disaster. Um, and I don't know if we've given her a card from it yet, but uh, one or both of us still is interested in opening our relationship. How would we go about it and do it better? This is a repair question. So a little bit of that is a polyamory question. And in every case, in all of these examples, there's a little slice of it that is really about polyamory specifically, at least in that to help with it effectively, a therapist would have to know that polyamory can work, know that polyamory itself is not the problem. And I think that's the key. I really know that polyamory itself is not the problem because I've seen so much polyamory actually work beautifully. So polyamory, the concept of polyamory is not the problem. That said, there is a problem for this particular client. And so if it's not polyamory, what is it? And it turns out it took me 492 pages to cover that because people have all kinds of relationship difficulties and also internal dilemmas. So part of a relationship dilemma, do we open or don't we open? Uh, do we have the parents move in or don't we have the parents move in? Uh, boils down to individual dilemmas. A part of me wants to, a part of me doesn't. 
a part of me doesn't, and a part of me wants to. And we tend to get polarized with that stuff. And, you know, I, one of us goes over here to this opinion, the other one goes over here to this opinion, we push against each other, and we get all entrenched. And so I have some worksheets and some exercises for how to work through a personal dilemma, how to help a couple work through a dilemma between two people, or how to support you as you work through your own dilemma between two people, how to make a good repair. So how to look at what happened in the past and figure out what went wrong with that. I have ways of thinking. As a therapist, I have ways of conceptualizing what is going on here, what happened, and how to deal with it better. And there are plenty of things that could go wrong with anything. And then there are some things that are um, relatively likely to crop up with polyamory. And one of those is difficult feelings like jealousy. So there's lots and lots in this book about how to deal with difficult emotions, because I don't think jealousy is the issue. I think dealing with difficult emotions is the issue. So if you can see what I'm doing here, instead of getting bogged down in little details about this, uh, this word or that word or that emotion or this relationship form, I'm zooming out a little bit and saying, well, I think that the skills you need to work with jealousy well are not that different from the skills you need to work with anxiety well, not that different from the skills you need to work with anger well. All of it, it's all emotions, it's all sort of the juicy messiness of life and how to handle all of that incredible complexity and uh, beauty and messiness in a way that helps you create the life that you want and the relationship that you want. So, um, this is what I think we can learn from people who are in polyamorous relationships. I think we can learn that relationship skills are very important to having a healthy self and a healthy relationship. And we want healthy relationships and we shy away from the hard stuff. And so if you're shying away from, for instance, tackling uh, a real difference of opinion about something big between you and your partner, maybe you want to tackle that. That's one thing we can learn from people who've opened their relationship. They had some hard conversations. Uh, they talked about it. They figured it out. They made a plan. They ran some experiments. They moved forward. And then they hammered it out as they went along and they figured out how to make it work. That's an incredible, beautiful thing. And I really believe that you can do that about the differences between you and your partner as well. Also, people in polyamorous relationships probably have dealt with some uncomfortable feelings. Most of them have. So we can learn something for sure about not shying away from situations that create emotions, instead figuring out how to deal with the emotions better. What a beautiful lesson. And uh, one that really uh, we deserve some support for because it's not an easy prescription. And some messy stuff happened in the past. Yes, in every relationship, right? In every life, some messy stuff happened in the past. And now how do we move forward into the future that we want, being the person that we want, the partner that we want to be? How do we bring that all forward, make a really good, deep, uh, rock solid repair so that we can build something strong? Uh, that is exactly what we want and what our partner wants. So uh, I think we can learn a ton. And so if you're just a regular old monogamous person or you're an asexual person or you're a person who's not interested in being in a relationship right now, you still might find something that would benefit you in this book because 25 personal growth worksheets, there's a lot in here. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. I'm dying to get some feedback about this book. Um, and thank you so much for listening. The next thing I'm going to talk about in my uh, fourth vlog in this series is what about secure attachment and a secure bond in a polyamorous relationship? Is that even possible? I'll be right back. <laughs>